A very good evening and welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Tracy Shilshi and today we're bringing back the focus on the Goods and Services Tax Bill. What with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, while addressing Indian and German business leaders yesterday, expressed the hope that GST will be rolled out next year. How is the government planning to achieve that? Well, to help us understand that, we have in studio this evening BJP's National Spokesperson Gopal Krishna Agarwal joining us. We've got political editor with the Business Standard, Aditi Fadnes as well. And we also have Trinamool Congress MP Shogata Roy and former Finance Secretary CM Vasudev as well joining us. Uh, if I could come to you first, uh, Mr. Agarwal, how is the government hoping to achieve that, uh, you know, by next year? What we think is that uh, we are committed to uh, roll out the GST 16 as has been said by the FM and the, again reiterated by the PM. But just last month itself, I mean, Mr. Arun Jaitley himself had expressed a lot of hesitation. He was not as gung-ho about, you know, not as confident as he was about being able to roll it out by April 2016, just in September. So what has changed since then? What has made Prime no, Minister Modi... What we were thinking that either we have to go either through a joint parliamentary session was one of the issue. Mm. But for that, it required that uh, a bill has to be negated or uh, has to lose and one of the uh, Rajya Sabha, and, uh, which was not allowed to be presented. That was not uh, possible. But now, what general discussion with the other state and other regional parties are there? We think that uh, we will have, we'll be able to get the support from the regional parties on the Rajya Sabha side. And further, we are trying to. Uh, there is a lot of requirement of the enabling environment that is required, whether it is in the IT form or in the various documentations requirement, or to uh, bring the states also, because once it is passed through the parliament, it has to go pass through the state government legislations also. Hmm. So this enabling environment, what uh, is being thought over, that once we prepare the enabling environment, simultaneously we will be able, to, we are hopeful that we may be able to take uh, Congress on board uh, as we have accepted many of it. Have you tried to reach out to them again? Uh, that you time know, also, are you our last sessions also, we had tried many times, several times, hmm. that at least on the bill, land bill and the GST at least they should come on board because many of their concerns uh, that we had sent it to standing council, their concerns were taken care of. Still they had some concerns, we were ready to agree, mm -hmm. uh, we were ready to modify those, those and talk uh, come on board. Mm -hmm. So I think now uh, after the BR elections, when this uh, political one man upship uh, mm -hmm. is uh, slightly down, we will be able to see more cooperation from the Congress mm. and more cooperation from the regional parties. Mm. We have been able to win over some of the party, more uh, co cohesiveness from some of the regional All right. One parties. of them, of course, is the Trinamool Congress. We've got Mr. Shokoto Rai, of course, still with us, uh, joining us, of course, here in the big picture. Mr. Roy, uh, is it unconditional support as far as GST is concerned? Is that the party line going to be? Yes, the Trinamool Congress had promised in its manifesto before the Lok Sabha elections and before that, that we would support the goods and services tax bill when it comes. We had some concern, of course, concerns that was regarding taxation on petroleum products, ability to tax tobacco for another five years, and compensation for uh, the revenue loss for five years. All those matters have been addressed. So as far as Renewal Congress is concerned, it will give blanket support to GST bill in both houses of parliament. But Renewal Congress, as far as Rajya Shabha is concerned, has only 12 members. Our support alone will be able to pass the bill. I think that the, the Prime Minister optimism about passing the rolling out the GST by next year is a little unfounded because there the Congress in Rajya Sabha has 68 numbers. You add to that the left and the JDU and other parties. So it will be very difficult for the government to get the two-third majority, which is 162 in Rajya Sabha. It has to do political management with the Congress. I do not support the Congress's stand. Mm. But if the government is serious about passing the uh, GST bill, he should have to make some compromise with the Congress. 
if the BJP goes on attacking Sonia Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi, the Congress will not play ball with them. Mm. So that has to be rolled. Just saying it in front of Angela Merkel that we shall roll out GST will not do the trick. And as of now, I do not see the possibility even after we had election of the GST bill being passed in winter session, okay. especially through the Rajya Sabha. Mr. Agarwal, I understand you, you would like to respond, but very quickly, if I could also take uh, a word from Mr. Vasudev on what his uh, viewpoint, of course, is, and if he does agree with the BJP stand, or for that matter, with Prime Minister Modi's stand, Mr. Vasudev. You know, of course, uh, the major problem facing the country is this very fractured nature of our politics. And that is uh, holding up and stalling many decisions which are beneficial for the economy. The benefits of GST are so obvious that uh, it is good for the consumer, it is good for the producer, it is good for the state governments, it is good for the central governments. <coughs> so if you were to consider India as a team, then not passing GST is like scoring an own goal. So, I think uh, the government really has to take some measures to deal with the political economy today. The, econo the politics is becoming so fractured and the government has to reach out, being the party, party in power. I think they have a greater responsibility to see that more and more people come on board for doing things which are so patently and so obviously beneficial for the economy and for the country as a whole. So I think the, the major problem today is to deal with the political economy and other things I think every party, even the Congress party I'm sure, who are the real sort of authors of the GST, they would certainly come on board. But it's the political economy which is not sort of allowing them to come on board to give credit to the BJP and, this, and it will spur growth and the economy grows and the development takes place and the growth process gathers more momentum. They feel that the BJP will take credit for that. So these are the type of things, I think, which are coming in the way. Otherwise, the benefits of the GST are so obvious. And anybody, any political party, anybody would agree with that. The second point I want to make is that this uh, 2016 seems to be a little overly optimistic today. Mm. Because the technical matters which need to be resolved with regard to the technology backbone the training of the staff in the state government and the central government to operate that technology backbone, I think that will take, take a little time and one should not hurry in that sense. In any case, if it is delayed by a year or so, it shouldn't matter as long as everybody is on board because we must remember that today in parliament it is only the constitutional amendment which is really allowing the centre to deal with taxes which are the, in the domain of the states and the states to deal with taxes in the domain of centre. So once this constitutional amendment is passed, then the next step will be the framing of the GST laws Then the rates and all that, we have not even reached that stage. Hmm. So still there is a long way to go. There is a technical aspect of the technology backbone, the technical aspect of training of people to operate the technology framework. And then, of course, the sheer process of uh, legislative approvals. Mm. So maybe April 2016 looks a little optimistic, but there is no harm if the government wants to set its sights a little high. But at the same time, I think it needs to take many proactive measures to see that the political economy, which is so fractured today, it gets mended a little bit. Mr. Agarwal? Uh, the, what are the reasons what um, uh, they are saying? That's the only reason I think it's the public opinion which will matter now. Mm. Be, uh, generally, everybody is of the same opinion that GST is one of the important uh, 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 driver for the economy. And the basic infrastructure that is required that I, we were also saying ki that uh, IT enabling environment is required, uh, or regulations, rules, regulations. But the country has been preparing on the GST for last several, seven or eight seven, years. Eight years. And no, what uh, I want to know is, it has been preparing itself, of course. You've been talking about the advantages. The advantages were discussed in the budget session as well. You were talking for, about it even, claiming that you will be able to get it passed even in monsoon session as well. Of course, we did know what eventually happened in the House. But still, you, do, you have been claiming that, you know, it is good for the country. You've been claiming you have the public opinion. But it hasn't happened, which is why we're wondering 
what has changed in this past month or so where you feel that this time around you are definitely going to be achieving it because if a prime minister modi a prime minister comes and not just on any platform he's speaking in front of another world leader and yeah. he's you know looking at trade ties with that country and there he claims that gst is something is definitely going to get rolled out by next year what is spurring that confidence one thing is the, the april uh, 16 deadline may not be achievable but we are talking of the whole 2016 okay another thing is there are several uh, new uh, mps which are going new uh, in the rajya sabha there is a new uh, people may be coming there will be mm. some changes from mm. the new states where bjp has won we will our strength will increase mm. further we are hopeful that many of the regional parties which we have been talking to on a private basis that they will come on board and they have shown that they are in consensus with gst mm. and we are most pro probably we are also hopeful that congress will see the light of the day they will uh, come to the uh, this re uh, reality that people want this Ms. gst Patnis, is one thing that, that you and see that the may, may put pressure on them that uh, that is the only persuasive effort that we can do for the congress all right do you do you think that the somehow they'll be able to break <clears throat> that barrier congress has got 44 mps in the lok sabha and uh, it it uh, knows that the government is in a minority in the rajya sabha mm. till such time as the government comes into a majority in the rajya sabha i don't think the congress is going to lose any opportunity to show itself up as the party which is holding up legislation which the government wants to pass mm. it is the 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 nature of the opposition it believes that it uh, that this should not be done and it's going to block so i frankly i don't think gst is going to be passed uh, till the last year of this government's tenure mm. april 2016 is out of the question it's very okay. clear mm. because the winter session is going to be a repetition of the monsoon session if you are to we are to believe what the congress internally is saying mm -hmm. uh the congress has certain reservations on gst uh it was not able to cite them and to uh, sort of operationalize them in the lok sabha because of its small numbers but it is absolutely determined that the kind of uh, gst that is ruled out as it is gst is very very truncated because you've left out uh, petroleum you've left out yes, alcohol. alcohol so uh, it's a very truncated kind of a gst hmm. uh that was done uh with the view to making sure that the good did not become the enemy of the best so in the last government what mr chidambaram said was okay let's roll it out as much as we can yeah. and then build on it as consensus builds it's interesting you brought that up you know because uh, like mr vasudev also is uh, uh, you know has been pointing out it's not just to do just with the betterment of this country for the economy it's a lot that has got to do with this political egos clash that we're seeing between the bjp and the congress in a way uh, the congress uh, you know uh, claiming that they do want to be taken in consideration they want to talk but whenever we do see at least any kind of attempt being made by the ruling government to discuss it they do not want to discuss well, that i don't know the congress says no attempt has been made by the ruling government to contact them so mm -hmm. i don't know who's talking to them mm. or who they are talking to mm. but uh, this is the this is the congress position on the ground no but on the, the in the parliament we have been talking when the last session also they had only objections on two but three why, times but why why wait till parliament mr agar why wait till parliament go to parliament and then you start uh, discussing these issues that you know are going to be you anyway have a lot of issues that you have a friction over uh, that aside why discuss an issue why discuss with them can we discuss this in parliament now that we are here why not try and reach out to them otherwise so before that because the issues are very clear there are minor differences only they want that 18% cap should be there hmm. uh, in the legislation itself hmm. and the bjp says that the legislation uh, that cap cannot be ca come on the act itself it okay. has to go to the uh, further on the rules and regulation side or it has to go to the standing council or whichever council has been made hmm. so there is a slide we are not saying that uh, the cap should not be there <coughs> ultimately the gst has to be reduced from 27 to a uh, lower level then only the real benefit will come so actually the objective is not very different that they are and two three things which they wanted that alcohol and tobacco should be kept out that has already been uh, accepted right. and even this uh, five years uh, uh, compensation so i don't think ki, uh, we have been talking there are no issues that, that is the when the actual <coughs> parliament session comes hmm. that uh, they are people are focused and then only 
it All right. will I understand Mr. Vasudev also wanting to add in something. Yeah, I just wanted to make a couple of points. One, of course, is that I think uh, there is a need for showing some statesmanship here on the part of the government also. That after all, the Congress is the one which really uh, started with the GST and did all the homework and legwork was done during that period. So they should try to give some credit to them that this is a product of all their efforts. And secondly, even the left parties were opposing Mr. Ashim Das Gupta, the then Finance Minister of West Bengal, who chaired this interstate committee on GST, he is the one who resolved many of the issues. So there is no harm in giving some credit to them also. I think there is a need to show some degree of statesmanship and give credit where it is due. Because BJP is really at the stage Hello. when the GST <coughs> is at a culmination. So others, other parties have also made their contribution. One should try to give credit to them also. And the other, the technical point, I think, with regard to uh, the, in the Congress era and the UPA government, the BJP, some of the states were opposed to the GST because it is natural that the, since GST is being levied at the last point of sale, the, uh, the states which are producing goods feel that they will be the losers. So, therefore, the uh, states like Gujarat, states like Tamil Nadu, which are producing states, felt that uh, they would be the losers. So, mm. as a compromise, they have added 1% ex extra to be paid to the states from the, where the goods are ori originating. Yes. So, there is a lot of patchwork which has gone into this GST to take care of concerns of different states so that nobody is, uh, suffers. And on top of it, the central government has said that the states will be compensated. Yes. So I think everything has been taken care of. It is really the politics which nearly needs to be managed. Mm. And I think there is a stage to show some statesmanship, to reach out to people, to give credit where it is due, and not try to take all the credit for themselves. Mm. We are, what we are saying is the GST is a national consensus. We are not saying any time that we know that it was uh, brought in the regime in the parliament also various statement fms said it was we requested congress on that basis also hmm. it was your bill you started it we were there were issues which we were taken care of you wanted it to send it to uh, standing committee to discuss more that has come its report uh, issue and suggestions have been incorporated so we are uh, giving full credit to them also and we are asking on that basis only hmm. that it's a national consensus. Let us move ahead on and implement those things. So hmm. I think th that uh, logic will get into uh, the, the uh, thinking of the um, opposition party. All right. Uh, and talking about, about those who are opposing, we do know, of course, the Rainbow Congress. No, no, this side. is. Yes. This is just. No, no, this is just wishful thinking. Hmm. I said at the beginning that we are supporting GST bill. We are committed in our manifesto. We have committed in the parliament itself. We have repeated that when it was debated in the Lok Sabha. Our, we had some problems, some objections. They have been met. We feel that GST is good for the country. And I do not fully agree with Mr. Jetley's view that GDP will rise by 1% if GST is 2 implemented. 2% is I, the hope. But yes. I think that creating a single market in the whole country, removing restrictions as goods move from state to state, will be very good for the economy, for commerce, for everybody as a whole. If the states lose money initially, then ultimately the states will also gain. But when Mr. Agarwal expresses wishful thinking, that way they will see the light of the day, they will give their one-man upship or one-upmanship. Mm. These are all fond hopes. You have to actually engage with the parties which are opposing, because they are not opposed to the principle of the bill as a whole. They are saying tit for tat. Hmm. That Congress, when it brought the GST bill, it was not supported in that way by the BJP. Hmm. And at that time, they point out that Narendra Modi, as Gujarat Chief Minister, was one of those who opposed the GST maximum. Hmm. So they are raising all those political points. Now, the government, if it really wants to, 
it should leave contentious issues for the big moment. And after Bihar elections are over, not raise such issues till the GST bill is passed in Parliament. If you are not practical and if you are scoring a point at over the opposition at every available opportunity, then one would conclude that you are not serious about passing the GST bill, which is so essential for the economy. I have not noticed. I mean, if parties have taken place in secret, but as a political observer, I have not noticed the government uh, walking the extra mile to accommodate the opposition. For instance, has the Prime Minister ever talked to any party in the opposition regarding any bill? Prime Minister always seems to be above all discussions. Even Mr. Jetli as Finance Minister has not. All they talk is sometimes Mr. Venkaya Naidu, maybe he talks to Malik Arjun Kharge. Hmm. What I feel, from a practical point of view, the Prime Minister should directly talk to the Congress President hmm. and try and sort it out at that level. Otherwise, this will not go through. Right. And then, then in any case, Mr. Jetli had mentioned in budget of 2014 that GST would be implemented within one year. I have got the copy of the budget speech. Yes, yes. See, one full year has passed. Hmm. <coughs> we have not made any progress. Absolutely. So, just promising <coughs> that will pass or to impress people to say that this will be in operation by next year hmm. is not a wise thing. I haven't seen the political effort, political management by the ruling party. I do not know if they are still at the point of cross, uh, scoring political points. All right. Uh, very quickly also, if just talking about the GST and the fact that how good it is going to be for the economy. The IMF itself saying that there is no direct relationship between the indirect tax form, uh, reform and also economic growth. You know, So that in itself is also one criticism uh, also coming the way of the Finance Minister Mr. Arun Jaitley that you know, this hopefulness of 2% growth uh, you know, uh, following the implementation of GST. That in itself also now with so much opposition that we are garnering of course on you know, how the government is trying to deal with it. That is another thing that's coming across. Well, you know, I don't, we, I don't think we should go into all that mm. at all. Mm. GST, we should look at GST as an administrative reform mm. uh, for the ease of doing business. <clears throat> if you keep uh, taxing at multiple levels, business will naturally have to, you know, rent, uh, rental costs are high. Yeah. The cost of uh, computing that tax is high. Mm. Why put people to that trouble? Mm. So... In principle, the Congress brought this because it wanted a countrywide pan-India common market, yes, which yes. is which which is absolutely reasonable. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with mm -hmm. that. Nobody mm -hmm. disagrees with that. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do you operationalize it mm -hmm. in a situation where the, you have a fractious parliament? These are all given. There's no point saying that you know uh, you should do it in the interest of the nation, etc. Those things don't they they they're not they are not things which people factor in mm. when they do politics. Mm. So you they have don't to sell, go they don't sell, they don't actualize. So you have to go about it in a practical fashion. Mm -hmm. And how do you do it practically? Which, As it is, the, the voices are very, very shrill during the Bihar campaign. Yes. That is bound to find, find an echo, mm. whichever party wins or loses, mm -hmm. in, in parliament. Yes. Now, I really don't know how you can forget the bitterness of the... Uh, election campaign which is yeah, gone whichever by whichever way it goes uh, uh, you know, in and November. parliament is going yes. to, con to for the winter session is going to meet barely 10 days after the Bihar election in results fact, come uh, out in fact if I am not mistaken there is of course uh, some work uh, as well going on that perhaps you will make it a little earlier right after Bihar elections is that the indication uh, but uh, uh, it will take uh, end of the uh, month only when the after Diwali the results will come around uh, 10th or 11th of, uh, from the 8th of November Bihar is election. of course yeah. counting yeah. yes uh, so it will be in the end after the season that will be end of the and after I think the whole process of uh, con conciliatory effort will come after the election only hmm. and uh, what uh, we are also not saying ki only 2% that is not the criteria that hmm. uh, GDP automatically GST will increase the GDP by 2%. We have seen good results in the European market. It's a nationalized market that is being targeted hmm. even on the agriculture sector. We have to 
where uh, we have to bring on a nationalized integrated market where there is a free flow of mm. goods from one state to another and there is an input cost benefit of excise <coughs> also. So, mm. industry sees a lot of benefit uh, on this issue, so it will be booster to the economy. All right. Well, we have, all, we have of course, been well versed by now, at least in the past year, if not, uh, you know, even before that, on what is actually the positives yes. of GST. But eventually, it lies yeah, on you, Mr. Agarwal, and yeah. the party on how it, of course, tries to bring in the Congress. I think that's about the time we have, of course, uh, I'm sure this is a topic which can, we will continue to discuss, uh, you know, definitely after the Bihar elections. I wouldn't be surprised even between that as well. Uh, but thanks to all our guests. We will course. extend our full uh, hand to the opposition. Party. We'll take your word for that, sir, and we'll have to wait and see, of course, what eventually happens. Thanks to all our guests, of course. No, for no, let's us see now. what you do. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Everyone's watching, of course. Uh, we, that's it on the big picture for today. We'll be back tomorrow with another topic. Do join us then on Rajasabha TV. Thank you so much for joining us.